Excited to share with you about why we decided to talk about demotivation as opposed to motivation. So um, if you do a quick Amazon check, you will see thousands, literally, thousands. Uh, thousands. <laughs> yes, of books about uh, motivation. And in part, because the, there's so much that's been published around motivation, we didn't think that we wanted to go down that path, but also because our experiences suggested to us in research that we were really asking the wrong question. It wasn't really about how we motivate employees, but rather how we stop demotivating them. And so really that became the inspiration uh, for this book and why we decided uh, to travel down this particular path of considering demotivation as opposed to motivation in the workplace. So in our experiences talking to an awful lot of people, um, one of the major things that everybody's aware of when they talk about their workplaces, whether we're talking about colleagues, uh, sometimes talking about our own work experience and feelings about work, and oftentimes when we talk to leaders who are considering uh, what's going on in their group, no matter what, everybody's tuned into this idea of motivation. When motivation begins to slump, um, when people start feeling that sort of lack of motivation, that's when we're all very, very aware of it. And so, uh, again, as Tara said, we're, we're so tuned into the idea that motivation is the responsibility of the workplace and the leader has a major role to play. And we have lots of help thinking about that, but we really never ran into anything that helped us think about what causes highly motivated, well-intended, good people to lose motivation. And so that's the point of this book. And we hope you enjoy reading it and thinking about that along with us.